Do you think Mark Zuckerberg should still be there? Well, we're not advocating for Mark Zuckerberg leaving the company. We think he has a role in Facebook. We just don't think he should have those two roles of CEO and chairman. Bring in an independent chairman. Mark Zuckerberg could still run the company. But we think that there should be independent oversight, just like in most other major corporations in America. All right. Uh, that was the Illinois State Treasurer making the case that changes have to come to Facebook because we keep uh, getting these embarrassing incidents where they're compromising our data, privacy, you know, the whole drill. Uh, to tech analyst Gene Munster, I want to get his read on this because this is beginning to proliferate, this type of talk that someone has to, you know, pounce at, uh, on Facebook, get a better sense of what it's doing. My only worry I raise with the Treasurer, Gene, and by the way, it's very good to have you, is that be careful what you, what you wish for, um, because I, I, I don't know if I want the government in my business, you know? Yeah, I feel the same way, and I will just leave that uh, aside, how my feelings about this. But as far as regulators are concerned, Facebook, obviously a huge target, everything that happened with Cambridge Analytic recently. And it is pretty clear that the government is going to have some role in terms of more regulation, maybe even some special uh, new person that would be appointed or that Facebook would have to appoint inside the company to watch this, them having to create some new uh, 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 development, a new group inside Facebook. But this concept of having a split role for Mark Zuckerberg, for him either not being CEO or not being chairman, I think is highly unlikely. Mark Zuckerberg is passionate about this company and uh, he just simply is not going to give up the reins. So I think that the, the answer here is going to probably lie somewhere in between uh, what is being proposed about him giving up uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the chairmanship and, uh, and the, the current status quo. Um, do you trust Zuckerberg, though? I mean, uh, because the genesis for all of this is the idea that we keep getting these surprises revelations that a database has been compromised, people's privacy has been compromised. Every time he promises he's on top of it, new allegations have come out that maybe he wasn't. Uh, and that, of course, gets, you know, government officials involved saying that we should separate the chairman and the CEO's duties. Of course, that's done at scores of companies for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is that it's simply a neater and cleaner way to do things. But, but how do you feel about the, the heat that Facebook is taking, that, that it has compromised not only it, people's privacy, but, but their trust? So I think if you look at the, the platform itself, I have strong views about the, does the world need Facebook? Does people, are people in a better place after using social media? And how is that data monetized? I feel strongly that uh, we should have less of that, people capturing data and making money off essentially selling your profile. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. So that's one side of it. Uh, but I'm also old. I'm 47 years old, and I think I don't uh, live and breathe on these sites. And so be, just because it's not good for society doesn't mean that there can't be a big business around it. So setting aside my personal opinion about social media and the broader role of social media, I think Zuckerberg is an honest person. I think he is out to do good. Uh, I think that things got out of control, and uh, he's trying to reel it back. So I, I think he is a good person in a business that I'm not so excited about. By the way, if you're old, then I'm Noah. Um, but leaving that aside, Gene, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about the, the reaction of investors who right now have bid this stock up to over $202 a share, who seem to be looking the other way. And I know you and I have gotten into this before. I know the privacy concern is a paramount concern, but it must not be a one and only concern, even among young people who seem to shrug their shoulders and accept it as something that could be compromised but it's convenience more than offsets that. What do you make of that? I think that's the generation that is uh, the future is a post-privacy generation. No, you're right. And not that they want to be taken advantage of, not that they want their credit card information uh, uh, stolen, but I think that this is a generation that, as you said, is that the utility, the value of being able to connect uh, outweighs the, uh, the, the risk of their privacy, their data being sold for profit. And so I think it's just uh, it's, it's, a, it's a slow turning of the, of, the, of the baton, moving the baton to the next generation. I think that's how they view it. So it makes, makes for a very different landscape, but I think that's just the reality of it. You know, uh, while I have you here, uh, this trade war that now is officially on with uh, our slapping $34 billion worth of tariffs on Chinese products, the Chinese responding in kind among the targets the Chinese have made. 
is on our chip making equipment, medical instruments and the like. The entire technology sector, you would think, would be feeling the pinch. Now, to be fair, many of them were selling off ahead of this news, so this might be a case of, you know, selling on the rumor, buying on the fact and reverse here. But what do you make of that and how sensitive or vulnerable technology might be uh, as this trade war goes on? So I think if let's assume that the trade war goes on is that it is there is going to be some consequence you're going to see you know products like the iPhone that could inch up there could be a few more percentage increase in the cost now Apple will likely uh, burden that they'll likely carry that cost themselves not pass it along to the consumers so that might have caught a few percent negative impact on profitability look at a company like Tesla that last quarter they mentioned that tariffs are having an impact on their inputs that could push out their profitability by a quarter or two so there there is some potential if this trade war comes uh, uh, ends up uh, remaining but I think the more important story here is that they're not going to remain I think what Donald Trump is doing is fashioning himself out as a modern-day Teddy Roosevelt, 26th president, 1901 to 1908. He really was about breaking down uh, trade barriers. And if you do that, ultimately, you lower the prices and that increase uh, sales velocity. And so my bet is we're going to be here six months from now, and I think that Donald Trump's uh, approach is going to work, and ultimately we're going to have uh, lower trades and we'll be off to the races, and that should be good for overall demand. You shall see. You know, Gene, I covered Teddy Roosevelt uh, doing all of that. So we'll see what <laughs> happens. Uh, Gene, thank you very, very much. Always good having you, my friend. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Neil. All right.